Hello, my name is Vaishnavi Sundar and I'm a filmmaker from Chennai, India. I have been making films since 2013 and all my work is about the lives and experiences of women. I have taught myself to make films over the years and I now write, direct, produce and edit all my films, learning new things every day. Some of you may know me as the creator of Dysphoric, the four-part documentary series on the rise of gender identity ideology and its effects on women and girls. Thank you to everyone who watched, shared and supported the film. I am now in the process of making my next project and it is called Behind the Looking Glass. In this film, I am documenting the stories of women whose partners or husbands transitioned. I have spoken with nearly 40 women of which 18 stories will be part of the film. These are women from all over the world because this phenomenon much as the ideologues would have you believe, is not rare. The film will feature stories of women from Japan, Australia, Germany and many others. And I will include the latest developments in India where a growing number of adult males are seeking surgeries and the courts are considering it as a valid reason for divorce. Unfortunately though, given the population and diversity of languages, Indian women are yet to log their experiences using the vocabulary that is universally understood. But I regret South Asia is soon going to be engulfed by it. Filmmaking is a time-consuming job and it is highly dependent on two things, building a strong like-minded team and of course money. And ever since I started talking about the harms of gender identity ideology, my access to both these things have been snatched away. The more controversial I get, the lesser my chances of finding collaborators and funding. Suffice to say, it is a lonely and exhausting job to take on several aspects of filmmaking all by myself. But with the help of a very small team and the feminist support from women world over, I hope I will execute this project just like I did this sporic. But I need your help. Max. Male Allies Challenging Sexism is a group of pro-feminist men challenging male violence against women in all its forms through events, actions and activism. They have come forward to collaborate with me on this project as a fundraising partner. Considering how much work women-led feminist groups take on, it is good that Max have stepped in to pull the weight. While women donate so generously towards this fight, I hope Max will be able to persuade men too to come forward and support projects like mine. 100% of funds donated via Max go into making the film and you can donate as little or as much as you can. Another way to support my film involves owning some pretty fabulous merchandise. Women's Rights Network and Violet Wind have introduced a new line called Fearless Female on their merch store to raise funds for Behind the Looking Glass. You can choose from a long list of things like t-shirts, hoodies, water bottles, mugs, tote bags, phone cases and such. Every time you buy from the store, 75% of the proceeds go into the film. Now you get to own something pretty amazing while also contributing to making a very important documentary. We are building 8 characters from scratch who have to remain anonymous due to possible dangers from their ex-partners. So your donation will help me bring those characters to life. Your donation will also help me with the huge expenditure towards post-production. As many of you know, I try to always work with an all-female crew. So by supporting this film, you are in turn supporting all the women in the crew. Behind the Looking Glass, in all likelihood, is the first ever documentary made on this subject. And together, we can create a historic piece of film that will remain on the internet for posterity. Please donate now. Anyone who's experiencing abuse or infidelity, it's not getting better. Get out. Get yourself out of this. Do not allow yourself to be persuaded or influenced by blandishments and manipulative arguments. Try to extricate yourself. Figure out the finances. There is nothing you can be or do that will make you the object of his affection. He is the object of his affection. It's like my dad died when I was 11, but I didn't realize. And I've been mourning him for 40 years. Oh.
on the left, it's axiomatic that the untold stories will be told. This particular untold story, no one wants to hear. 私たちのような存在に対して何があっても好き好んで一緒にいたんだから合意の上でしょと考える人もいてそんなことでは相手を無罪にさせられかねないから嫌なんです。To question whether or not you responded to it correctly. Because a lot of what we're describing is familiar patterns of domestic abuse. And it's quite a big leap for people to make from hearing the stunning and brave story with the woman who goes along with it to hearing our story, the woman who talks about how she's been abused. It's hardly covered at all. When it comes to newspapers and what sells newspapers and what gets clicks, I think a man standing there. Uh, in you know, stilettos with fake breasts, is obviously going to get more clicks, more attention, and sell more papers than you know, the abused wife in the background. One narrative gets all the airtime, and the other one just has to be silenced. And that's the woman who's saying, Well, he hit me, he raped me. You know, he spent all our money, he was terrible to the children. No,、nope, that's now a woman, the best sort of woman, the trans woman, and she just has to shut up. Women are finding us by Googling trans widows. What's been really surprising. From looking at the website traffic, is just geographically where a lot of these women are. Countries like Russia, Japan, Saudi Arabia, you know, if we're going through it here and we're being silenced, how much worse must it be for all of those women in cultures where women don't have a voice at all? Because I think it happens in all cultures, in all religions, in all societies. This is not just a thing that happens to only. White American or European people. When AGPs are fetishizing women's oppression, you have to ask yourself is it even more likely that they're going to be fetishizing it in countries where women are even more oppressed? This man has been on this hero's journey. He's reinvented himself. He's come out like a phoenix or a butterfly or something like that. And he's now this beautiful woman. And there's this fucking bitch who is saying, no. That's not my story. This is my story too. You know, I married a man, you fathered my children. And she has to be silenced. Ich meine, wenn man zwei Kinder geboren hat, gerade mal wenn die Kinder noch klein sind, dann ist das Sexualleben halt ein bisschen, sagen wir mal, zweitrangig. Und damit wollte er mir sozusagen, dadurch, dass ich so abwesend bin, zu ihm, in seinen Augen wahrscheinlich eher ablehnend, müsste er das ja tun. Look what you make me do. This might seem as though it's the end of everything for you, and it might seem as though it's the end of your life, everything you had or believed you had,、um, but it isn't. J.K. Rowling has like a quote that、uh, rock bottom is a great place to launch off from. That is the spot where you get to recreate and redefine. What's important. If people choose to be horrible to me and to insult me and call me names, then so be it. I will not be silent about it. Not for my sake. The damage is done to my life now. But for the sake of women everywhere who are being silenced on this subject, I'm speaking out for those people. I cannot tell you how much happier I am now than I ever was in my marriage. It's better on the other side. Yeah.